What's up, everybody? Thanks for stopping by Vermont Scale Customs. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Crawlers. I think this is, what, number seven, I guess? Um, so, uh, let's get right to it. Got a shipment today from Hard Park Crawlers. Pretty psyched about what showed up. And it is basically all of the parts and pieces that <clears throat> allow you to make uh, wheels for essentially super class stuff for 24 scale so um, this is the first one that's turned out I'm really happy about how this came together and so I'm going to explain to you exactly how that all worked out first and foremost the tires that I ended up going with are from Injora these were purchased essentially as an upgrade to the MN99 series or MN99S trucks uh, it's a 112 scale truck uh, and the rim is original rim size here I can tell you is about 40.9 I guess about 40 millimeters in diameter um, and it ends up working out just perfect that width wise and so on and so forth this after you cut the sidewall and everything uh, is just the exact right size for these and then I'm also doing custom foams which I've already pre-cut and I was going to show you how I kind of finish those up as well to be able to get that to fit the inner ring a little bit more to kind of make way for this this lip that's all the way around. I think these worked out really well. I was kind of curious how this was going to come together. I think we're going to have an amazing amount of traction. I think the way the sipes reach all the way down around uh, on both sides, both inside and outside, worked out great. I think the way everything clamps together, uh, this is a clamp lock. These basically, you'll have to cut your, your bead lock out of the wheel or out of your tire um, and then clamp everything down with the wheel. And it's a nice solid fit. You don't have to worry about that if you do it correctly. Uh, so, like I said, there's quite a few steps involved. So, I should just shut up and uh, get right to it. I think first thing I probably want to do is show you how I prep the foams. It's the easiest step, I think, and it'll kind of get you geared up for what you're about to do. Um, I have already taken these, which were essentially like a full width foam. And if you could imagine like a larger piece of tire foam on the outside, which I cut the inside out of and did away with that. And now what I did after that was all done was I cut those two pieces in half and separated them. So now I have essentially two tire foams out of what was once the larger, um, like a 110 scale tire foam. So now that I've done that, um, I kind of want to soften up these edges just a little bit. So I'll take my scissors here and I will just cut a little bit of the corner off all the way around until I get to the point where that doesn't necessarily need to cut anymore. Just do away with that little strip of foam. Do the same thing to the other side. Really all this does is just kind of softens up the edge on the inside of the tire and if you have any like corner action um, you don't have like just extra foam material right there to worry about collapsing you know you have kind of a nice softer rounded edge that I personally feel like does kind of help a little bit in, in getting tires to conform around certain objects so that's basically that's that's almost the outside full outside treatment and since these are hand cut and everything there might be a little anomaly here and there that you might want to take care of if you happen to kind of just see things just take a, a quick look around them see if there's anything you want to you know trim off now is the time to do that so those are pretty much ready to go let's kind of discard this stuff off to the side now I did mention about wanting to trim for the inside because basically you kind of want to do the same thing to the inside to give this groove here these this lip sort of someplace to sit so i just take the thing and turn it inside out you got to do it carefully too so you don't tear the foam if you do tear the foam it's not the end of the world it can still be used and then basically once again just take the same thing just you're going to cut the corner off of the inside edge of this foam like all the way around and you can be aggressive, but I wouldn't be too aggressive. I wouldn't take too much material away. Discard that off to the side. Get 
the other piece off my finger. And then just flip it around and make sure you do the other edge as well. And the reason why I say don't be too aggressive is because you you don't want to wait, take away too much material. You always want to just take small amounts of material away until you've found where you'd like it to be. If you take too much away initially, you have no chance of getting that back. Um, and you have to cut a new foam. So now that those edges are sort of cut away to the inside, I'll show you here how that actually sits a little bit nicer in there. So that seats very, very well on both sides. And it'll kind of compress in there and seat itself real easily. All right, so we're just gonna set this off to the side because that's only just, uh, that's part one. That's the easy part, like I said. Now comes the fun part. Hard Park is also selling a jig that comes, uh, basically it's a 3D printed piece that you want to place in the center of your wheel, whichever wheel you're going to retire, excuse me, whichever tire you're going to cut. I'm cutting tires here, not wheels. Um, and what I've done, I did on my first one, was make sure that it was centered as good as it can be. Then I take a Sharpie with a nice fresh point on the end of it. And with my fingers pressed around, just sort of kind of hold a little bit of pressure and then take the tip of that marker and just work it all the way around. And you can either spin the whole thing like I'm doing right here and just kind of repeat the process. And the reason why I say use a nice sharp tip is because the way I'm angling it really is, is marking in right on that edge, right where it's making contact with the tire. I don't want to cut any more. I don't want to cut any less. I want to make sure that there's enough there for when the, the rings clamp onto the inner ring. There's enough there. And I can mark them both, uh, but I don't want anything to rub off while I'm working on, on one side. So I'm just going to, I'll mark them separately. So we want to set the marker off to the side. Now the type of scissors that I'm using, um, you guys probably have whatever kind you like to use, but me personally, this one of my favorite hobby pair of hobby scissors is in this Gerber multi-tool. I think this is made of titanium. I've had this tool for 20, 21, 22 years, roughly somewhere in that neighborhood. They still cut so incredibly well. They're not 100% perfect, but they do a great job on this particular job right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut right in to the bead and I'm gonna follow just to the outside edge, which puts me right to the inside edge of my marker line. And I'm just gonna divide that and cut all the way around. Essentially removing the bead that would have been used for the bead lock and you're just gonna now have just the sidewall remaining. Don't be afraid. I mean, it is an irreversible modification to these, but these tires are fairly inexpensive. I think they're still only about 14, 15, 16 dollars for a set. You get a set of wheels and everything with them, but 16 dollars for a set of really nice soft tires that I think are gonna work great for the Super 24s. I think that's a pretty good deal. I'm sure a lot of other people will have their their, their favorites that they're going to want to mount up. I know a lot of people are stretching uh, the, the Enjora pin comps right now. And they're having good luck with those. I just thought I'd give these a shot. And so far, the first one that I've done, I've been very, very happy with. So as you can see, that's 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 as, it's as quick as that. It really doesn't take take much to do. Now, one thing I did on the last one is uh, I just went around and with my thumb, just kind of press the edge of the, the rubber in between your thumb and index finger and just kind of clean off the marker line all the way around. Because who wants to see that when you're done with the tire? So there you go, that's all set. Now that one's ready to go, that side's ready to go, excuse me. So let's uh, repeat that step by taking the jig Make 
sure it is centered. And grab a Sharpie with a nice fresh point on it. Coffee and crawlers, cheers. All right, so I've already gotten one side of this cut. Got the other side marked out. I did realize that I was slightly off center one way or another, but I have a pretty good idea of now where to cut these after having cut three beads off. So Let's grab the the foam. I don't recommend trying to insert the foam with the ring in the middle. That could definitely work against you. You want to be able to collapse and compress and move that in pretty easily. Now these would probably be more foam than I would than what I would normally run in a tire, just in general. But since these are open and fully vented all the way around, I kind of feel like that additional material inside of there is gonna be somewhat beneficial for maintaining the structure so they don't have any side roll and you don't end up just like riding on your rim, you know, as you come down certain things or what have you. And then you've got plenty of material there to be a hold on it to hold on to like in turns and try to do breakovers and stuff like that i really do think that this setup is going to be awesome i couldn't be happier with how this is turning out i hope some other guys kind of i've posted uh a couple times some links <clears throat> to these tires in the 24 scale groups on facebook and so hopefully guys kind of take heed to that. I'll include the link to these tires and obviously the rims and stuff too in the description of, of this video. But pretty much, anyway, aside from my just monotone rambling here, let's start putting this thing together and uh, see what we can do. I know you guys want to see what they're going to look like with the front face on, so let's do the front face first. I'm probably preaching to the choir on wheel assembly or anything SCX24 or FCX24 related or anything like that. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already know, but in situations like this, just start every screw without really putting the clamp down on everything. We're going to edit that out maybe. It helps. When you're seating a wheel like this, if you just want to grab a couple of threads just to make sure that everything sort of stays together for a minute, and you don't want to just start clamping pressure all the way down with just one screw to start off with. You want to kind of even things out a little bit. I personally prefer like a nice like triangle pattern, which kind of helps evenly distribute pressure almost immediately, like all the way around. And you, once again, don't tighten everything down right off the bat kind of take a look at everything and just make sure that your spacing between like the edge of your side sipes and stuff like that and then the edge of the carbon fiber looks like it's the same all the way around. If things look pretty good, then go ahead and maybe set your other three screws. All right, so now that they're all in there, you can kind of, on these particular wheels, and I think probably on the other ones, you should be able to see in to see just how how far your screw heads are, are set. 
And now you can just kind of work your way around doing like, I don't know, about a turn, turn and a half each, each screw. And I really wouldn't do any more than, than that. Just keep working your, your way around all the way. And the thing that I've always kind of noticed about working on SCX24 is from the very beginning, like having the Rubicon and the C10, like when you're tightening these screws back up, you feel that point where the resistance becomes basically that, that indicator that it's reached its, its point where it's quite literally just tight enough. That's, that's all it means. And these feel like they're doing the exact same thing. You know, as you work your way around, all it's going to take is like a little nudge on each screw head to finally get them, you know, seated, if you will. And I don't really recommend taking it any further past that. It's not really necessary. You know, that's now got a good lock all the way around. I can see, you know, rubber now squishing through. In most places, the cut was pretty even. So it's come through, you know, all the way. It's gonna hold a-okay all the way around. I won't give it a full pressure until, until this side's all set. Like for example, this one. This is, this is great. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. This worked out so well. And these are nice soft tires. They're gonna have, they're sticky too. You can hear it sticking to itself on the inside, so. I think these are gonna work out pretty well. Okay, so let's go ahead and <clears throat> get to putting the back one on here, the back ring. I won't bore you with uh, doing all four of these in one sitting. I will definitely spare you that. And there you have the front and rear bead locked down or clamped, sandwiched. Sandwich construction, clamps, I don't even know. What do you call it? I noticed on the last, the one that, I, the previous one that I built, it's really important to make sure that you seat all of these screws um, very carefully each way, like all the way around. You don't want to just crank one down make sure that you do them you know in some sort of consecutive pattern and, and in a uniform way as well and I can already feel that drawing up in there so that's a pretty good sign this means that the tolerances on the machining and everything are, are definitely right there so it's going to be a good snug fit once everything goes together You don't want to use any one particular screw to lock any of this down to start off with. Try and use everything. Once again, all in unison. To get that hub set, you know, tightened without, without stripping anything. That's the most important thing. Another little thing, I don't know if you've caught this and I do this, I do this almost every time, especially when I'm working with hub stuff, is any, I put the hub screws in, I'll, I'll backspin them until I hear that thread catch, and then they'll spin forward with no problem. I have a few times in the past cross-threaded, and it's been because I didn't backspin to find where, you know, the thread catches. And if I'm not sure where it is, I'll do it again, right there. You hear, you backspin it, and you hear a little click, a little pop, you know that you're ready to start threading and you're not gonna cross thread there. And for me, that's always been, like I said, that's really been pretty important, especially to do on the hubs, because you you can probably stand to strip one hub screw, but you start stripping two or three, and you're gonna start running into problems, depending on you know whether or not they're next to each other, anything like that. But you begin to run into issues with whether or not you can maintain that hub being balanced, you know, like a wheel balanced, stuff like that, being straight up and down on, on the axle, what have you, or just simply even just being tight enough. And 
just keep your working your way around. Once again, don't tighten any one particular screw down all the way or try and force it. Just gradually pull that hub into the center of the carbon fiber wheel. And eventually should reach a point where everything is pretty much as tight as it can be. Don't ever over force anything with these. It doesn't take much. And then you can always flip it over and kind of take a peek and make sure everything is looking like it's it's seated pretty well. And it looks like it is. It might take a little bit more adjustment, a little more tightening on one side or another. See if there's anything there to be drawn up. But just always work in like the smallest little increments with stuff like this. You don't want to just go at it with all of your strength. Just use like your fingertips to, to really kind of just feel that torquing point, you know. I'm going to go ahead and say that that wheel is complete. I am very happy with how that looks. And once again, foams are working exactly how they're supposed to. The bead is seated all the way around. I ended up getting good spacing. Everything locked down very well. I think this was a success. Folks, thanks very much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and do these other two wheels, and if you want to see how they look like, let's see what they look like on the MOA. Stick around to the end of the video. Um, if you think you pretty much got a handle on all of this and you're ready to move on to something else, thanks for being here this long, and I hope you picked up a couple of tips on how to get your Hard Park 1.8 Super Wheels all mounted up on probably tires of your choice, but at least these are the ones that I recommend. I think it's gonna look good. I'm gonna end up throwing these on the MOA and uh, we're gonna take it from there. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Have a good weekend and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.